Hello, and welcome to our demonstration of the Fast Track Proposal Writer software program. To begin, we're going to take a look at some of the things behind the scenes, so to speak, and we're going to go up and take a look at, uh, we're going to go first to the top left of our screen and review what's going on there. Under File, we click and we see New. If we copy from an existing proposal, that means that we have a uh, proposals on file import from fast track estimating and we're going to show you how to do that that will be our we're going to do two proposals today two short ones and the second one will be importing from the fast track estimating open opens an existing proposal that you are you are now working on save recent gives you a list of the uh, most current proposals that you're working on and then of course exit. All right, let's go to customize. This will be the second um, thing to look at here. Now, see this fill-in table? This is a list of all the markers replacement language in the program. For first, I want to show you what a marker is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to phrases. We're going to go to work. I'll click on work. And that opens a list of all of the general headings. Now we're going to go down to roofing. We're going to click on that and this shows all of the paragraph languages that are in here and we're going to go to number 73110 and I'm going to click on that and that immediately pops up the language that's behind 73110. Now I want you to look up here. When you see a marker that is where the pound all capital letters and another pound that is called a marker. Now you'll notice in the first line here we have one, two, three, four of them. We got contractor and you notice one is with a zero. Those are always replaced automatically by the program. Anything with a zero on it will draw from either your company information or the customer information and it will, it will fill that marker for you. Specify square feet. With a one that means you must type something in that area and it will the program will automatically replace that that whole marker roofing material 2 that means that you have to go into the selection the uh, language uh, and and pull up the word that's going to replace the roofing material it tells you what kind of roofing material you're going to put in okay so that's what a marker is and you can see those right there now we're going to go back customize now we're going to go back and look at the fill-in table and then we're going to make that full size so you can see it let's look first at percentages that's the one on the left that's your fill-in table that is your marker description right there and we're going to talk about percentages there's all kinds of different percentages most of those in there we've already entered the percentages all you have to do is pick one to make it work let's go to um, Let's go down here to, let's go to bath, and you can see under fill-in table we have a number of bath items listed, and we go over here under description then, we have two-thirds bath, basement bath, family room bath, first floor bath, half bath, laundry room bath, main bath, master bath, upstairs bath, okay, all right. Let's go down now to, you see all the different stuff that's going on. PQR for roofing materials. There we go. These are all the list of all the roofing materials that you can select. Notice on here, corrugated steel, galvanized, sheet steel, Geico Flex, built up, cedar shakes, cedar shingles, fiberglass, plywood sheathing, single ply, split sheet, all kinds of different roofing materials. Okay, so that's what marker replacement language is. This is a fill-in table and this is the marker replacement language over here. Let's take a look now at phrases and there's phrases that cover three different sections of your contract. Each contract should have three parts. The proposal part which is this is who you are and who you're working for and what you're going to do. The work section outlines the entire job, the physical work on the job, and the contract section gives you the legalese to make everything happen. Okay, so let's go first to the proposal section, open it up, 
and let's go professional services and we'll open that up and we'll look at 110 agreement for professional services and you'll notice it's all this is now unedited and this is all of the the language that this is your first page of your pair of your contract notice the markers in there talking about your company what state you do business in your business license okay uh, customers address all the customer information here and the job you're going to do for them is right there it says jobs too okay let's take a look at um, 1350 guaranteed price contract now you notice we call these uh, paragraphs and you'll see here that is more than just one paragraph so we had to come up with the terms so we just generally use paragraph to define the whole set of language that describes as an example 1350 which is guaranteed price so if you take a look at that you'll see there's one two three four five five complete paragraphs of language that describes your guaranteed price contract okay all right let's take a look now at work and you'll notice that there is quite a number there's something like 440 some paragraphs of contract language in here um, spread out and let's take a look here at uh, first section we're going to look at is general conditions and let's go look at uh, this one right here 12120 all right but this describes everything that if you the contractor are going to furnish the plans what the specifications are in other words what you agree to do for the owner that's what's in there how about this one here under permits much shorter but it still tells the story you'll pay for and obtain all the necessary permits to complete this job and we put in an allowance amount uh, to be included for all permits required for this job now you can de you can delete that allowance amount out if you know exactly what the permits are going to cost and it won't affect the you know the the clarity or the description of the, in the contract okay owner understands and agrees that no special permits or engineering has been figured or included that is a super important lang uh, line right there to make sure you include that in all your paragraphs especially engineering because more and more building departments now are requiring engineering drawings and if you don't have that in there and you go back to the homeowner and say we didn't figure any engineering on your plans and we're going to have to charge you extra and the homeowner is going to look and say hey you're the expert I ain't paying for any more engineering drawings you should have thought of that before we, we entered the contract that's why that language is in there okay let's close this one and let's go down to um, let's go down to electrical open that up and let's go to um, well let's pick 132 uh, 110 adequate service here's another one of those uh, CYA paragraphs that you want to make sure you're always having your contract providing and assuming the existing electrical feed or drop line depending on what you call it meter base and panel are adequate contractor will do the following electric work on the home or building whatever you're calling it that again is one of those languages that you protect yourself because you know you never know what the uh, uh, electrical inspector is going to look at a look at a meter or um, uh, look at a panel and decide that it's inadequate for the job that's going to be done and require you to change it and they'll red tag the job until it does get changed so that's the language you want to make sure you always have in there okay let's go back to customize again and phrases and let's go to uh, down to the contract section and we're going to go first to the owner's terms and conditions right here and you'll notice there's any number of paragraphs in here all dealing with terms and conditions that pertain to the owner on the contract and we're going to look at this one right here allowance amount you'll notice in here there's no markers uh, in this in this uh, section but there's capitalized words and the reason we do that is to make sure that the owner looks at that and understands what that language talks about material allowance or installed allowance amount they're two different things and we have capitalized those to make sure it gets the owner's attention so that you don't have an argument or dispute later on when that language is being um, uh, uh, talked about all right let's go to um, uh, 41 uh, 710 let's go down here to selections now this discusses the selection process 
for the job that you're going to be doing. It has markers on it. But you'll notice also you've got an extended text section down below where we have language in there. The extended text means it gives more detail and supports the language in the first section above it. Let's get out of here. Let's go down to include in all contracts. Now, this section, you notice it says CYA, cover your assets. Okay, and it's lengthy. I firmly believe, and I can tell you that the biggest problem with most contracts is the lack of information in the contract. And so we've included, I put a list of things in here that should be in every contract you write. You can never put too much in a contract, but you certainly can put in too little. Okay, let's take a look at some of the language we have in here. Let's go down to 49520. Building access. Here's the one that bites a lot of contractors. Owner understands and agrees that if owner's request key is not furnished, contractor prior to job start. Owner will provide access to the residence from 7.30 to 5.30, Monday through Saturday during the duration of this job. And if any time the work area is not available to the contractor, then you get paid for your time driving to and from the job plus mileage. That's what that contract says. That makes sure you can always get into the job if the owner doesn't want you putting a lockbox on the house. Let's take a look at arbitration. You'll notice in there it specifies binding arbitration. It specifies a non-attorney arbitrator. And it allows you to specify the association or company you use for arbitration. Notice this is down at the bottom here. It says the arbitration will be a non. The arbitrator will be a non-attorney selected by mutual agreement between the party falls in this dispute. That way you get your, to pick somebody that knows something about construction. All right, let's go down to four ninety nine ten punch list. This gives you the language to describe exactly how you're going to conduct a punch list on the job that you will be doing for the people. You'll notice you got one, two, three, four, five uh, paragraphs of language in here that completely outline the punch list procedure. You put that in there and that stops that endless parade of punch lists that these people keep throwing at you and extending the job out simply because in most cases they don't want to pay you for the work you've done. That's what the punch list procedure for. It ties that all up, gets it all cleaned up, and ends the job on time. All right, now let's take a look at one more section here, and that's contract language. All right, 510. Let's take a look at generic contract. This is a one page contract, uh, but it's the final page of the contract. Notice you have your your dates on there when you're going to do it, your company name, your license number, and all the other stuff. And it says that you're going to furnish the labor and materials to do the job. And here's your payment schedule right here. And we're going to be looking at that more later on. We'll fill one of those in uh, in this demonstration so you can see how it works. You have a contract price. You have sales tax, total contract price, down payment, however many progress payments you want to put in there, plus the final payment on the job. And you'll notice this is all right above the signature line that owner's signature right on there. They're within easy eyesight, usually within two or three inches at max. And that's the way contracts should be written. You should not have discussion of money, down payment, progress payment, final payments, or anything like that up in the body of the contract. It should all be right on the final page of your contract, right above the signature lines. Okay. Now you don't have some judge sitting there telling you that they don't understand the contract because they couldn't find the, the sales price or the progress payments or anything else. And why should you know the customer have to know this stuff, Mr. Contractor? You're the one that wrote the contract. This is no good. I'm not going to allow it. And I've been in courtrooms where, con where judges have done that. If you put everything on the last page, right above the signature line, there's no dispute about what the down payment is, the progress payments, the contract price, any of that. It all goes away because the signature is right there. And that's where you want to be.